Intuition Gems, welcome to another learning opportunity. For this week, we shall have another lesson to discuss, but before that, may we have first our opening prayer. Let us pray the Lucian prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, wellspring of goodness and blessings, we give you thanks and praise as one Lucian community. The graces you incessantly grant upon us and your divine providence have sustained our beloved university throughout the years of mission and excellence. Having been founded by the Congregation of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we pray that you keep us committed and dedicated to our mission and identity to serve the Church and the society as we become living witnesses to the gospel values proclaimed by Jesus. For if we are steadfast in our good and beautiful mission, our works will bring success not only to ourselves, but also to those whom we are bound to love and serve. Inspired by St. Louis, our patron saint, who was filled with the noble spirit to steer him to love you above all things, may we also live believing that we are born for a greater purpose and mission, as we dwell in your presence all the days of our life. Grant all these supplications through the intercession of Mother Mary and through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so let's have our recap. For the last three weeks, you were able to discuss the following. The importance of literature, the seven literary standards, the elements of a short story, and the traditional genres of literature, which includes prose and poetry. Now, here are our objectives for this week. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to give description on the different 21st century literary genres given by the teacher, enumerate the different literary genres in the 21st century, provide examples of the different literary genres, and you must be able to create your own genre based on your understanding of the lesson. Now, here is a question which I would like you to answer after we discuss our lesson for this week. If you were a literary genre, what would it be and why? May I repeat? If you were a literary genre, what would it be and why? Alright, so here is a game entitled Elite Nature Go. I actually decided to include or integrate a game in this presentation so that at least you will be motivated to listen and to finish this video lecture. Okay, so here are the mechanics. All you have to do is to identify how many Pokemons are there in this video lecture. As you watch the video lecture, there will be Pokemons in some selected slides. Patiently, you have to watch the whole lecture so that you will be able to count all Pokemons. If you are already sure of your answers, send a private message to our Facebook page, USLSHS Language Academy, following this format, your name, section, and then your answer. For example, Love to Joy Arruiz, St. Thomas Aquinas, answer 34. Okay, I hope that's clear. First, three students to give the correct answer shall win 50 pesos worth of load. So, I hope that you will learn in this video lecture. At the same time, I hope that you will also be able to win the prize. So, that's all. Good luck. Okay, so finally, let's formally start our discussion. Literature in the 21st century. I believe when you're still in junior high school, you're able to study literature you're able to read literary pieces okay written by filipino authors and written by foreign authors but for now we are going to study literature in the 21st century now the question might be or your question might be this one when can we consider a literary piece as a piece in the 21st century Okay, so that's a question that we have to answer as we go on with our discussion. Now, let's study this line. 
As society and technology change, so does literacy, because technology has increased the intensity and complexity of literate environments. The 21st century demands that a literate person possesses a wide range of abilities and competencies, or many literacies. Now, literacy has always been a collection of cultural and communicative practices shared among members of particular groups. Take note that the basic literacies that a person should possess are the following, your ability to read, ability to write, and to speak. Okay. But now, since there is an advent of technology, Active, successful participants in the 21st century global society must be able to do the following. First, develop proficiency and fluency with the tools of technology. Second, build intentional cross-cultural connections and relationships with others. Third, design and share information for global communities to meet a variety of purposes. And the last one, Create, unique, analyze, and evaluate multimedia text. Okay, so in simple words, just like what I said a while ago, we shouldn't only be able to read, write, and speak, but we should be able to know how to use the technology in order for us to utilize this technology in our daily lives. What is 21st century literature? Now, here are the characteristics of 21st century literary works. First, it should be created within the last decade. When I say within the last decade, I'm actually referring from year 2000 up to present. Okay, next, it is written by contemporary authors. When we say contemporary, we are referring to the present time. Now, question, can we consider a literary piece published in the year 2006 as an example of a 21st century literary work? Okay, so the answer to my question is yes. Definitely because I just said a while ago it was written in the year 2006. Now what if the author of this piece died in the year 2011? Can we still consider it as a 21st century literary work? The answer to my question is yes, because going back to the first characteristic, okay, it is still created within the last decade. Okay, next, it deals with current themes and issues. Of course, if you are a writer in the 21st century, you will be inspired to write a literary piece basing from your own experience or basing from what is happening around you and not what happened from the past. Though, uh, that, uh, though there might be time that the reference or the basis of the author is from what happened in the past, but most of the time, it deals with current themes and issues. Next, it reflects a technological culture. Later on, we are going to discuss the 21st century literary genres and most of these genres reflect, uh, most of these genres reflect a culture or a society wherein there is an existence of technology. Okay, most especially later the different speculative fictional works. Next, it often breaks traditional writing rules. Okay, so since uh, there, uh, we are in the 21st century, there are also other characteristics of a 21st century literary work, wherein it doesn't apply with that of traditional literary. Here are the abilities of a 21st century learner. First, actually I already mentioned this a while ago, build relationships with others to pose and solve problems collaboratively and cross-culturally. Okay, you are now considered as a 21st century learner, and I believe you have the ability to build relationship with others. Okay, though we are in an online learning, I believe that through communication, through your group chats, okay, you're able to 
build a relationship with your classmates and maybe if you encountered problems with regard your subjects you're able to solve this because of communication and because you know how to use technology okay next design and share information for global communities to meet a variety of purposes okay design and share information i believe that most of you are already good in editing or you can already make an infographics when i say infographics this is a combination of information and graphics you can already design this one okay or you can already make one now to meet a variety of purposes now what is the reason why we usually design an infographic or a flyer okay maybe the purpose is to entertain or to inform Okay, so if you're a 21st century learner, you have to be creative. You need to have the ability to design and share information. Do not just receive information, do not just absorb information, but be able to share this information to others. Next, manage, analyze, and synthesize multiple streams of simultaneous information. Okay, so as students right now, okay, during this pandemic, we are having our online learning. Okay, I know most of you are being pressured with the number of performance tasks given to you or the number of learning tasks given to you. Okay, in order for you to be considered as a good 21st century learner, you should be able to manage your time and to synthesize multiple streams of simultaneous information. Now, I'll give you one tip, okay, so that you will not get pressured all the time. You have to select which subject is the easiest. Of course, there's no easy subject, but identify which of the tasks is the easiest so that it will be the first thing that you need to do. Okay, next, create, critic, analyze, and evaluate multimedia text. I know that most of you are already good in making PowerPoint presentations, in making or in editing videos, what else? In um, editing a photo using Photoshop and other softwares. Okay, so... A 21st century learner should possess these skills because this is actually necessary already in learning because most of the time if not all the time your teachers usually require you to do performance tasks using this kind of multimedia text next develop proficiency with the tools of technology Okay, what is an example of this one? How can you develop your proficiency in speaking with the use of technology? Okay, if you have a cell phone with you and if you have a recorder, okay, how can you develop your speaking skills? Of course, um, what I can suggest is that you try to record your voice and you try to listen after you record okay in that way you will be able to know if there is a need for you to improve your pronunciation or if you happen to commit a mistake while you are speaking here are additional characteristics of 21st century learners first they grew up using technology as a primary learning tool okay especially now that we are in an online learning and you are and if you are enrolled or if your modality is blended or full online okay so you are either using your cell phone your tablet your laptop your ipad in order for you to access the lessons 
in your subjects. So that is actually an evidence that you are using technology as a primary learning tool. Next, capable of navigating and interpreting digital formats and media messages. Now you try to compare yourself to your parents if they are not techie or to your grandparents. Okay, so you are capable of navigating, you are capable of planning which software okay, are you going to use in your different tasks in school. Okay, and in addition, okay, sometimes even if the software is new to you, okay, by simply trying to discover the features of that software, okay, Little by little, you are able to know how to use the software. Okay, and the last one, possesses literacy skills which include technological abilities. Okay, what are these technological abilities? Uh, these are keyboarding, internet navigation, interpretation of technological speak, ability to communicate and interpret coded language, and decipher graphics okay last week you discussed the traditional genres of literature now i'm pretty sure that the 21st century literary genres are new to you okay so let's discuss each of them the first 21st century literary genre that we are going to discuss is chick lit it is a genre of fiction which addresses issues of modern womanhood, oftenly humorous and light-heartedly. It typically features a female protagonist whose womanhood is heavily thematized in the plot. Chick is an American slang for a young woman and lit is a shortened form of the word literature. Women fiction is a wide-ranging literary genre that includes various types of novels that generally appeal more to women than men. They are usually written by women, are addressed to women, and tell one particular story about women. The genre description is an umbrella term that covers mainstream novels, romantic fiction, chick lit, and other subgenres. An example of Czech literature is The Devil Wears Prada. Okay, the story tells the professional adventure of Andrea, whose greatest dream is to become a journalist. Andrea gets a job in the fashion industry through Runway Magazine, the most famous of its type. But Andrea won't develop her writing skills in the magazine, but her talents as the editor in chief's assistant, Miranda. The problem is that Miranda is a merciless, posh, and cruel woman, making the experience a living hell for the girl. The environment in the place will be cold and extremely critical with the physical appearance. The girl will have to change her simple and plain style for a more trendy and elegant one in order to gain the acceptance of her ruthless boss and colleagues, especially Emily, her unpleasant workmate. Despite everything against Indra in the office, she will consider the experience as a challenge, drastically changing her clothes and self-image with the help of Nigel, the magazine's art director. Nevertheless, the job becomes extremely demanding because of Miranda's tough work, rhythm, and nearly impassable tasks, leaving Andrea without a private life with her boyfriend, family, and friends. So if you want to know the whole story, you may read the novel or you may watch the movie. Okay, so the last one that we can get from this story, The Devil Wears Prada, is sometimes work sucks, but you have to deal with it. Okay, or sometimes you get pressured at school, but you have to deal with it because at the end of the day, no one can help you except yourself. And believe me, someday you will become successful. Okay, so the next 
genre that we're going to discuss is flash fiction. Okay, it refers to a largely fictional work of relative brevity. And when we see relative brevity, it's just short, it's very simple. Okay, in terms of length, there seems to be some disagreement. Some say that it should have not more than 50 words, while others say that it can have as many as 1,000 words. Okay, it goes by different names. Okay, so meaning there are other terms for flash fiction. It is also called short, short story. Okay, isn't it that we have short story, but actually to describe it, it's a short, short story. Okay, so there's a little redundancy. Next, another term is microfiction. Okay, we all know what do we mean by the term micro. Okay, we also call it micro narrative and sudden fiction. Okay, why sudden fiction? Because um, you can already get the main idea of the text. Because just like what I said, it's just very short. Okay. In addition, according to Bob Bachelor, it is also known as the smoke long story. Why smoke long story? It is because it is compared to the range of time that a person consumes when he or she smokes. But of course, I'm not encouraging you to smoke while reading a flash fiction. It's just a metaphor. Okay, I hope that's clear. Here is an example of a flash fiction written by Josephine Cox entitled Life Saver. He was panicking. Calm down, she whispered. What's your name? Are you okay? She tried to comfort him. He was hanging on for dear life. You don't want to do that. Think of all the people who love you. She said sympathetically. Don't worry, everything will be alright. What ending would you write? A subcategory of flash fiction is the six-word flash fiction. It is an extreme offshoot of flash fiction which does exactly what it says on the tin. Take note that this type of flash fiction only consists of six words. Another example is Everything Changed with That One Knock by Jeannie. Now try to think of a six-word flash fiction and post it in our forum tab. An example of six-word flash fiction is this one by Ernest Hemingway, For Sale Baby Shoes Never Worn. If you notice, there are only six words but it already conveys a complete thought. The next genre is speculative fiction. Speculative fiction is usually a combination of different traditional genres which include the following. Fantasy historical, horror, or science fiction. Sometimes it's a combination of fantasy and historical, fantasy and science fiction, science fiction and horror, and others. Okay, so there are different genres of speculative fiction that we are going to discuss as we go on with the next slides. Still under speculative fiction, to speculate is to ask the question, what if, and open your mind to an infinite number of possible answers to that question. Okay, so under speculative fiction, there is a question, what if? Okay, an example is, what if this kind of creature exists in the world, or what if this kind of technology is present in our society? Okay, so the author usually asks this question, what ifs, in order for him or her to create a story under speculative fiction. Okay, so anyway, we are going to discuss the different subgenres of speculative fiction, wherein these are usually the products of what if questions. The first genre of speculative fiction is science fiction. Okay, it deals mainly with the impact of actual or imagined science upon society or individuals. The premise may either be based on 
or flatly contradict scientific facts and principles. Now take note that science fiction is a genre of speculative fiction dealing with imaginative concepts such as futuristic science and technology, space travel, time travel, faster than light travel, parallel universe, and extraterrestrial life. So if you happen to read a book or watch a movie with these concepts, you're actually reading or watching a science fiction. An example of science fiction is The Martian. Just to give you an overview, when astronauts blast off from the planet Mars, they leave behind Mark Watney presumed dead after a fierce storm. With only a meager amount of supplies, the stranded visitor must utilize his wits and spirits to find a way to survive on the hostile planet. Meanwhile, back on Earth, members of NASA and a team of international scientists work tirelessly to bring him home while his crewmates hatch their own plan for a daring rescue mission. So obviously this is an example of a science fiction because of course it deals with astronauts and the setting itself would tell that this is a science fiction. Contemporary Fantasy these are stories set in our present day world. This could have magic or magical beings present in our world or the magical beings could be looking into our world from another but the main characters would remain in our world for the story. Now take note that when we say contemporary fantasy, it is usually defined by its setting, which is the real world and the present day. It is our very recognizable world with some fantastical elements and tropes worked in. The traditional fantasy tropes are still found in this subgenre, though they are often reinvented for modern use. Now, an example of contemporary fantasy is Harry Potter. First, it is because it involves magic. Second, because it, its setting is in the present time. Now, magical elements in a contemporary fantasy world are often hidden from the non-magic population. This doesn't mean that magic isn't powerful or wondrous, just that not everyone knows about it. Okay. Even though magic is often secret in contemporary fantasy, it will still have a sense of rationality and is often integrated into the world itself, just like Harry Potter. There is some variability here, but because these stories are set in contemporary times and have an easily recognizable setting, it is much easier for writers to include social commentary. For example, Harry in the Harry Potter series leaves our world and finds similar problems in the wizarding world, and he does indeed become very involved in trying to solve some of those problems. So these are great opportunities for parallel when creating a magical world set in a contemporary time period, which creates opportunities for authors to comment on the problems of the time. Okay, so the next genre is dark fantasy. It is a combination of fantasy and horror. It involves the following characters, but not usually the main characters. First, we have the vampires, werewolves, mummies, and zombies. Okay, so a good example of dark fantasy is the train to Busan, wherein zombies are involved in the story. Okay, another example is we have the twilight. Okay, that is an example of dark fantasy. Okay, for as long as these characters are present in the movie or in the story, we can classify it under this genre. The next genre is supernatural fiction. This type of stories remove all elements that fall under fantasy and horror and embrace supernatural elements that considered commonplace in the natural world. Okay, take note it is natural and it removes all elements under fantasy and horror. Okay, so what are these elements or what is this element that we are referring to? 
it's magic because magic is usually present in fantasy okay and it embraces supernatural elements we are actually referring to the setting we're in it's not in an imagined world but instead it's in a natural setting okay an example of this one if we're going to compare it to the traditional genres it will be epic if you know the story of the epic or if you know the epic biag ni lam ang lam ang has supernatural powers okay he is strong but he doesn't have magic okay Okay, next, we have superhero fiction. This is a type of fiction that follows character with superhuman abilities that come up against the sturdy villains trying to take over the world or maybe just a certain city. So the main goal of the character is simply to save the humanity or to save the world. Okay, this is actually the favorite of most children nowadays. Okay, an example of this one are the following. We have Spider-Man, Captain America, Wonder Woman, Super, Superman, and the like. And to contextualize it in the Filipino setting, we also have Darna and Cristala. The next one is Utopian. These are stories that envision an ideal society, often including a metaphor for how the choices humanity determines such a possible reason. A utopia is a community or society possessing highly desirable or perfect qualities. Utopian novels are often set in a perfect society or ideal state. The term utopia was invented by the English philosopher Sir Thomas More, recalling ancient Greek words meaning good place and no place. An example of utopian fiction is Back to the Future. Back to the Future Part 2 is the second movie of the Back to the Future trilogy. Although strictly not a classic utopian movie, it has unique comedic perspective on how people of the 1980s thought optimistic future could look like. Take note that if the setting of the story is in an ideal society or world, it could be classified as utopian fiction. Another example is Tomorrowland by George Clooney. Just to give you a brief background of the story, Whenever Cassie Newton touches a lapel pin with the letter T on it, she finds herself transported to Tomorrowland, a city filled with huge robots and slick buildings. The gifted young woman recruits the help of scientist Frank Walker, a previous visitor to Tomorrowland, who years ago made a startling discovery about the future. Together, the two adventurers travel to the metropolis to uncover its mysterious secrets. Next to Utopian is Dystopian. These are stories that take place in a futuristic society that is repressive or controlled, often under the guise of being perfect. In Dystopian fiction, the characters live in a real-life nightmare. These types of stories try to get the reader to see the consequences of a certain ways of life. It shows us the worst possible future consequences of an issue that we have now. In short, it refers to a state or condition in which life is extremely bad. Dystopian worlds focus on failed governments and societies where things can range from bad to worse. Dystopian settings are gritty, grim, and have a heavy focus on decay and loss. Considering the mechanical aspects of a dystopian world can help you build the right themes into your story. Now, what is the difference of utopia and dystopia? Utopian fiction is set in a perfect world, an improved version of real life. Dystopian fiction does the opposite. A dystopian novel drops 
its main character into a world where everything seems to have gone wrong at a macro level. Much like utopian novels, dystopian novels can take place in a distant future, the past, or an alternate present. Generally, dystopias use contemporary society as a basis for their imagined dystopias, lending an element of social warning in the texts. In this way, authors can use features of modern society to imagine what a futuristic one might look like, and in a dystopia, that future is most often very dark and troubling. The Netflix original dystopian series Black Mirror is a great example of how this is done, as it shows how things like social media and overuse of technology might be contributing to a dystopian future for humanity. The series, as well as many other dystopian works, shows how technology might soon prove to be more harmful than good for us as a species and for civilization in general. And how it could indeed be making us less human and less humane. We mentioned a while ago that in dystopia, a society is being controlled. And a good example of this one is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Just to give you a brief background, in what was once North America, the capital of Panem maintains its hold on its 12 districts by forcing them each to select a boy and a girl called tributes to compete in a nationally televised event called the Hunger Games. Every citizen must watch as the youths fight to the death until one remains. District 12 tribute Katniss Everdeen has little to rely on other than her hunting skills and sharp instincts in an arena where she must wait survival against love. Next is apocalyptic fiction. These are stories which are concerned with the ends of the civilization due to catastrophe. This might come from nuclear war, pandemics, return of Christ, technology, or general disasters. Now, what is the difference of dystopia and apocalyptic fiction? Dystopia often explores social or political struggle or the reason of the end of the civilization is because of society or political issues. Well, in apocalyptic fiction, it is through catastrophe. So taking into consideration the different or the types of conflict, if it is apocalyptic fiction, it is man versus nature, while if it is dystopia, it's man versus society. An example of apocalyptic fiction is The Drowned World by J.G. Ballard. This is an apocalyptic novel in which rising temperatures create a flooded, increasingly tropical earth and the human struggle to survive is complicated by psychological changes. So, the rising of temperature is an evidence that this falls under man versus nature conflict. The next one is post-apocalyptic. These stories are set in a civilization after an apocalyptic event or perhaps years later. Take note that in order for a literary text to be or for a novel to be post-apocalyptic, the setting must be one where the end of the world has already taken place and characters are trying to survive and start anew. The Resort is an example of post-apocalyptic fiction wherein, after humanity won the war against zombies, tourists are able to kill zombies for sport at the resort. However, things go wrong when the park security fails and the hunters become the hunted. 
Another example is Kill Command, wherein this story focuses on a group of U.S. Marines attempting to survive after a training mission against warfare AI goes wrong. Alternate History This is any story that messes up with the history of the world. Okay. This is a fiction that is based on history and that explores what might have happened if certain historical events figures had been different. For example, if you plan to write a fiction entitled 2020, and we all know that there are many unexpected events that happened in the year 2020. So if you're going to write a fiction story, the content of the fiction should be different from what really happened in the year 2020. An example is Fatherland. It is a movie about Hitler and how his crimes have been covered up because he has survived. It is a twist on real history with plenty of suspense, murder, and interesting plots. The movie has real footage from World War I to make it more historically realistic. It is more or it is about what would have happened if Hitler had won the war. Okay, so let's have a recap from Utopian until alternate history. So when we say utopia, the setting is in an ideal or perfect society or world. When we say dystopia, it refers to a state or condition which life is extremely bad due to societal or political issues. For apocalyptic fiction, it is concerned with the end of civilization, but this is due to a potentially existential catastrophe. For post-apocalyptic fiction, the setting must be one where the end of the world has already taken place and for alternate history, it is a story that tries to change what happened in the past. Okay, so the fourth main literary genre in the 21st century is Tudal fiction. This is a literary representation where the author incorporates doodle drawings and handwritten graphics in place of traditional fonts. When we say traditional fonts, we are referring to letters. So the drawings enhance the story, often adding humorous elements that would be missing if the illustrations were omitted. So one example of a doodle fiction is the one that you can see on the screen. Next, we have digifiction. The term media text refers to any media product we wish to examine and from which we derive meaning value. So a digifiction could be a newspaper and magazine articles, comics, films, TV shows, music, performances, interviews, or talks. Digital media is digitalized content, text, audio, video graphics that can be transmitted over the internet or computer networks. Now, there are different types of digital media. First is podcast. A podcast is an episodic series of spoken word, digital audio files that a user can download to a personal device for easy listening. Streaming applications and podcasting services provide a convenient, integrated way to manage a personal consumption queue across many podcast sources and playback devices. Next is ebooks. Ebooks, it is an electronic version of printed book that can be read on a computer or ebook reader. The third one is digital story. It is a combination of pictures, videos, audios, texts, narration, and sometimes animation. And the last one, which I know you are familiar with, is a vlog. This is a blog that contains video content. 
creative nonfiction. It is a genre defined as simple and accurately as three stories well told. It is like jazz. It's a rich mix of flavors, ideas, and techniques, some of which are newly invented and others as old as writing itself. Now, why did we say creative nonfiction? Remember that nonfiction are based on real life experiences. Take note that the word creative describes nonfiction. So, meaning, it is a true story, but it is written in a creative way. So, how to write in a creative way? Maybe it's with the use of figures of speech, it's with the use of idioms, and other creative terms in order to make your nonfiction work appear like or look like it's a fictional work. Take note, it says here, true stories well told. And we can only consider a story as a well-told one if it is creatively done. Hyperpoetry, a form of digital poetry that uses links using hypertext markup. It is a very visual form and is related to hypertext fiction and visual arts. The links mean that a hypertext poem has no set order. The poem moving or being generated in response to the links that the reader or user chooses. So an example of hyperpoetry is this one. Okay, so if I'm going to click this one, it will direct me to another page. Okay, and this one is what we call the link. Now, this genre is also called cyber poetry that refers to work of verse which could not be presented without a computer. Definitely because, like what I said, it will direct you to another page. This is because it contains links to sub poems or footnotes, poetry generators, poetry with movement or images. Hyperpoetry is usually high steeped in the visual and involves parts that are read in varying orders. Next, we have blog, a weblog, a website containing short articles called posts that are changed regularly. It is the shortest version of the term weblog from the letter B of the word web and log. It refers to regularly updated journal on the internet. Now, some blogs are written by one person containing their own opinions, interests, and experiences. Now, here are some of the popular websites where you can upload your blog or post your blogs. We have Blogger, WordPress, Squarespace, Tumblr, Drupal, WordPress, Movable Type, Joomla, and Typepad. Next, we have Mobile Phone Textula. This is a literary work originally written on a cellular phone via text messaging. From the title alone, Mobile Phone Textula, of course, it is created using a cellular phone and the content is usually a poem from the word Tula. Okay, so chapters usually consists of about 70 to 100 words, each due to character limitations on cell phones. Now, the example that you can see on the screen has more or less 96 characters, which include the spaces. The next one is metafiction. It is a fiction in which the author self-consciously alludes to the artificiality or literariness of a work. Metafiction begets itself because it creates something new, a story about stories. Metafiction slays itself because it breaks the realism, the naturalism, the illusion of the story. 
Metafiction brings itself to life again because it shows the magic of the story transcends its own destruction by parodying or departing from novelistic conventions and traditional narrative techniques. There are three elements of a metafiction. These are the author, the character, and the reader. So a metafiction could be a novel about a writer creating a story. So meaning the persona in the story is a writer writing a story inside the story. Okay, it could also be a novel about a reader reading a novel. So just like a writer creating a story if it is a reader reading a novel. So if you're going to read, the main character is reading another novel. Another one, a novel wherein the author is the character or simply the persona. And it could also be a novel where the narrator intentionally or accidentally exposes himself or herself as an author creating the story being read. Next is graphic novel or comic book. It refers to any format that uses a combination of frames, words, and pictures to convey meaning and tell a story. So when a comic book exceeds 50 pages and is bound in either soft or hard copy, it becomes a graphic novel. So if you're going to convert graphic novel into text, we call it novel, while if it is a comic book, Okay, its equivalent is a short story. Now, here is an example of a comic book. Testimonio. Testimonio traces its origins to autobiographical literature. It largely concerns itself with the issue of marginality. It is an authentic narrative told by a witness who is moved to narrate by the urgency of a situation or in simple terms it is a text written by someone who happened to be a witness of either war marginalization oppression or revolution flip top or rap battle it is a contemporary type of poetry it traces its origins to the hip-hop culture, which includes, among others, in art forms, the rap, disc jockeying, and break dancing. So flip-top or rap battle is the modern equivalent of balagtasan. The famous artists of flip-top or rap battle are Abra, Basilio, Zaito, Crazy Mix, Batas, Tipsy D, and Sinyo. If you would like to watch an example of a flip top battle, you may uh, watch on uh, YouTube. So this one, what you can see on the screen is a battle between Sinew and Tipsy D. The next one is Photographic Essay. It is a series of pictures that evokes an emotion, conveys an idea, or tells a story. Now take note that when we say essay, it usually consists of words, sentences and paragraphs but since we are referring to photographic essay the number one element is a picture remember that your essay should be able to stand alone without a written article and make logical sense to the viewer now here are the other elements in a photographic essay first we have the range of photos there should be a variety of photos that must be included in your photographic essay next we have the order of the photos it is important that the order of your photos effectively tell a story in an interesting and logical sequence. Next, we have information and emotion. Your photos should include both informational and emotional photos. And the last one is captions. In a photo essay, captions are your best opportunity to describe what is happening in words and ensure that the viewer understands. Now, here is an example of a photographic essay. Based on what you can see and based on the order of photos, you try to 
understand what is the message of the photographic essay. Next, we have contemporary memoir. Last time you discussed what is memoir during the second week of midterm. Okay, and when we say memoir, it talks about any specific event of a person's life. But when we say contemporary memoir, it is a subgenre of creative nonfiction that recounts the experiences of someone's life. And it usually involves a public portion of the writer's life as it relates to a, a historic event. For example, um, you're able to win a contest and then if you would like to write a narrative about your success in a winning that contest, that is actually an example of contemporary memoir. It's just a, a specific event of your life. Okay, the next one we have is spoken word poetry. I know that you are familiar with this one. It is a poetry intended for performance on stage for a live audience. Usually, the aim of a spoken word poetry is to touch the feelings or emotions of the listeners. And usually, the theme of a spoken word poetry is based on the life experience of the speaker. Okay, so the next genre is theatrical adaptation. It is a genre wherein a story from another medium is rewritten to conform to the elements of theater. Let's say, for example, it is originally a printed novel or a movie. And in order to conform to the elements of theater, there should be a little revision. Now, what are the elements of theater? Okay, so the elements of theater includes the following performers, audience, director, theater space, design aspects, and text. An example of a story with theatrical adaptation is Alice in Wonderland. Okay, so we are down to the last one. We have text talk novels. These can be a blog, email, or IM format narratives. When you see IM, it means instant messaging. These are stories told almost completely in dialogue, simulating social network exchanges. So let me show you an example. Okay, so this is an example of a text talk novel. It uses instant messaging to deliver the story or to present the story. The title is, His Name is Love. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope you learned something from me. Again, please don't forget to answer this question. If you were a literary genre, what would it be and why? So for the mechanics of your performance task, you kindly check in LMS. Okay, so the deadline is on Friday at 4.15 p.m. Okay, so if you have questions or clarifications, you may contact the following, USLSHS Language Academy, Languages Academy 2020 at gmail.com, or you may check your teacher's profile, or you may also visit our YouTube account, Languages Academy. That's all. Thank you.